Okay, so we, we can start now. Sorry for the, the technical difficulties. Uh, so my name is Piotr Jagielski. Uh, I work at a company called Talk from Warsaw. We are software house. Uh, and the title of my talk is Sequencing Dance Music with Closure. Uh, so this is a quick talk, but I have uh, some plan for it. So the firstly, I will... Uh, is this visible in the back? Maybe I can... Enlarge. Uh, I will give a really quick uh, introduction into closure language. Then I will uh, introduce the overtone library with some, uh, with some example of, of playing uh, music. And uh, at the end, I'll, I've planned to do some uh, short performance. Uh, maybe it will work. So, um, yeah, regarding closure, I, I think you may know it as for its really weird syntax because it's a uh, it's a lisp, uh, but uh, yeah, if for me also it the first uh, the first impression was not uh, that uh, pleasant. But uh, when I dig uh, into the language, uh, it occurred to me that it has some really nice ideas underneath, and the the most uh, the most imp important I think is so-called interactive development. <coughs> So uh, how it work uh, as uh, uh, many modern languages today, Clojure has a built-in REPL, so you can start a console within uh, your project and then just type a code which gets evaluated. But what Clojure uh, allows you also to do is uh, to connect uh, to a running REPL from uh, any other process. So it is common for for major editors to have plugins for Clojure and for this rep development. So uh, also there is also a myth that uh, you can only use Emacs to develop Clojure. It's no longer true because now here I'm using Atom, uh, which is more convenient for big beginners. So here I have uh, this window connected to a running uh, uh, process in the terminal. So I, I can also uh, evaluate code here, but still it's not a rocket science. So what makes it really interesting it is that I can also um, send a code to a running REPL straight from my uh, source file. And because Clojure is a Lisp, uh, it is really trivial because every expression is a Lisp, so you can uh, really easily uh, send it over the wire to some other process. So here I have a function definition, just a hello world. If, if I uh, execute this code, it just the function gets registered and I can now call call the, the function uh, and see uh, instantly uh, the results uh, straight here in my uh, in my editor and in the REPL also. And of course if I just modify the function uh, and reevaluate re re the new definition it will it will also uh, mm, the new the newer invocation will take the latest version. So basically, this is uh, this is how the development workflow in Clojure looks like. So you just write uh, a small function, then invoke, interact with the code. Uh, if you are satisfied, you can you can uh, then compose this function with, with some some bigger pieces of code. But also we there is some uh, some test case framework. Uh, so if you have a sample invocation, you can then then transform it into test cases for for some regression or edge cases, but this is rather the, the test last approach. So you, you just, uh, in traditional languages, you, you should, uh, you, you mm, must write a test case just to, just to uh, execute your code. Here, you just constantly execute, uh, execute your code, so it's, the tests are rather for some, for some regression and, and for refactoring and, and so. So this is not a must-have for you. Okay, so getting back to the to the main topic, which is uh, mm, which is a uh, library called Overtone. Um, it's a, it's a sound synthesis library uh, created by Sam Aaron and Jeff Ross. And uh, so the the main concept in in Overtone is an instrument. So there is some convenient helper functions to, to 
I'm not going into details of this code, but what I want you to, to, to get from this is that you, you, you have some, some small, small components from the library that lets you design a, a sound like a, a synthesizer. And also uh, that you have this def inst macro, so like you define a function in Clojure, you can define an instrument. It's the same, nothing uh, really different from, from normal code. And also, if you call uh, if you call this created instrument uh, with some argument, it's just uh, you can call it uh, just like a normal function, but it makes some side effect of uh, playing uh, a sound. Uh, also, if you just um, specify another argument, that the sound w uh, should uh, s uh, the sound would be different. Uh, and yeah, what is really nice with this interactive development, if I just change this this instrument somehow, uh, then then the, the later invocation would sound different. So so basically, you just. Uh, do the same as a normal closure code. So you just, uh, if you try to, to mm, design an, an instrument, you can just uh, experiment and, and uh, li without leaving your editor, you can, you can work with this. Uh, but uh, yeah, in, in my opinion, this is a really cool uh, library to, to design a sound, but not a, as good uh, with further. So like playing melodies, it's, there is some concept uh, of uh, this, but it's really uh, not <laughs> that uh, simple. So um, what I'm using is, is another library. It's called Leipzig, uh, created by Chris Ford. And uh, what is uh, the main idea of Leipzig is also mm, another closure uh, idea, is that uh, this is... Uh, uh, that you model the world with just uh, plain data stru structures. Uh, so you have like uh, lists, maps, enclosure, uh, and you just uh, represent something with, with, this, with this plain data structure. So here uh, uh, in Leipzig, the melody is, is just a sequence of notes, and each note has a time, duration, pitch, and also the instrument that should play uh, uh, this note. Mm, and Clojure really, really has good support for data structure. They are immutable by default. There are some persistent. So if you create, want to uh, modify, for example, a map, you just create another map, but uh, it shares some uh, some structure with the with the previously ma uh, previously created map. Uh, and th this is the, the these lines here are just telling that uh, wha what uh, this instrument means. So, but it's not uh, important here. The important is that we are just. Uh, I'm just calling the, the previously defined function from Overton here. So equivalent of playing a single note in uh, Leipzig. So this is basically the same. But I also can uh, play these three notes uh, from this melody. Uh, yeah, but it's still uh, a bit verbose just to uh, type all the notes with the. Uh, line by one, so, uh, line by line. So <coughs> there are some further abstractions in this Leipzig uh, library. One of these are scales. So uh, there is a special scale namespace that uh, lets you compose uh, compose various functions to create complex scales. Uh, and then, uh, if you have a if you have a scale, you can use this phrase function. With, with, uh, that just takes a sequence of durations and uh, uh, indexes of given scales and then uh, zips these two collections to create some, uh, me some melody. So for example, I have here uh, a five lines of code uh, uh, using this phrase function and it, pr it produces a, a melody uh, with 15 notes. Uh, and one more thing uh, we need here is because these durations are represented in bits or the note length, so we have to specify uh, what the bit or the note uh, means. So we have this uh, tempo here, so we are uh, saying that this is 110 bits per minute. And now we can play this, this whole melody here. Thank you. 
Uh, yeah, and um, getting this concept further, uh, I create my own library that uh, is um, helps you create uh, drum patterns for the uh, for the melodies. So the idea is that I have um, a separate directories with short samples. I can load the samples and then um, then play the the drums by n by name. So I have some kick drum, snare drum, hi hat. And also, just like uh, the normal melody, I can uh, represent a, a drum pattern. So this is something really simple. But uh, then, uh, using these further uh, helper functions, I can create something more, uh, something more, something <laughs> more complicated. And of course, I can then. Uh, Mix the the drum uh, the drums with the previously defined melody with this uh, with function, so the whole song uh, sounds like this. Uh, yeah, sorry for not picking some uh, Swiss uh, but French. Uh, uh, band, but I didn't know any of this. Um, so uh, next, uh, because we are running out of time, maybe I will show you something. Uh, because the, this, this example, uh, this example was was rather static, uh, because uh, when I play the melody, I cannot uh, interact with it. So um, I recently discovered this uh, technology called uh, Open Sound Control. Uh, and basically, it allows you to send events between between various devices uh, through uh, Wi-Fi. So I have uh, I have a sample application uh, on my mobile phone uh, with some uh, I don't know if it's visible, but there are some knobs here uh, or and buttons. Uh, and uh, uh, it is using this uh, open sound control. Um, protocol. Uh, so when I start the server here, uh, just check the IP of my machine. Okay, uh, let me mo let's modify this. Uh, And uh, if I uh, then you just um, register a handler, so just a simple function that takes the event and uh, does something with it. So uh, I think it's not working. Maybe one more try. No, so, uh, but basically this is uh, um, this lets me mod modify the the playing sound uh, in in runtime. So I can, so I can. Uh, in this example, I was just uh, modifying the the frequency. So maybe I will show you without this um, this uh, interface. But when I have this melody playing, I can now uh, modify the cutoff, so the filter uh, cutoff of the sound, like this. So without, uh, like, this ap application that was like 10 euros, so uh, without buying any, any gear, you can just imitate the, the uh, like DJ equipment, but uh, it it is also the lags are no, not so not so uh, big. So I think it for a start it's it's really good to to learn something. Uh, okay, so maybe it's time for for a performance now. So I can uh, I should.
Okay, so that was it. Uh, so for for the the, at the end, uh, I have just uh, one thought that yeah, we are like developers, but uh, instead of like writing all the the time apps and websites, we can just because we have so so much powers that that make something uh, really different from the the other. So you can can get get inspired by some by some like internet of things uh, or the hardware things so i will uh, try to encourage you to to explore some uh, some different concepts and and techniques to uh, to improve your developer uh, ex experience uh, so so this is a message for me so thank you very much for this talk <coughs> Okay, thank you. Thanks again.